hypothalamic activation. And I'm actually going to spend a little bit of time on this because this is, this is a study that I think is probably among the best that I've ever read, the most carefully controlled um, and interesting study that's been done. This was done in 2005. This is the activation of the anterior hypothalamus. I told you the anterior hypothalamus was strongly associated with the choice of sexual partner. And so you can actually measure the activation of the anterior hypothalamus, and I'll tell you how you do that in just a second. In animals, that activation is, is via pheromones. Everybody remember what pheromones are? They're those chemical signals that we give each other that differ between males and females that you may not, probably are not aware of, but they're very powerful. Androgen is one of those signals. It's a pheromone. Androgen's produced by males. It's secreted in sweat. Estrogen's produced by females. It's secreted in urine. So here again are the two hormones that we talked about in gestational um, development. In this study, they had three groups of individuals. Twelve heterosexual men, twelve heterosexual women, and twelve homosexual men. KS refers to the Kinsey scale. So the way that these individuals were grouped we're giving the, the kind of survey that we talked about earlier, where they were asked about identity, they were asked about behavior, and they were asked about attraction. The higher the score in the Kinsey uh, scale uh, is uh, associated with homosexuality. The scale is from zero to six. Okay, so they were very careful to be as accurate as they could be in separating these groups so that they didn't have inaccurate data coming from them by having a mixed group. Okay, so I wanted you to show I wanted to show you how careful they were in separating them and how much difference it makes in the data that you get out. They did other things to control these individuals. They wanted to make sure that they were as alike as they could be in all of these different ways. None of them were taking any medication. They were all right-handed. They were all HIV negative. They all had normal MRIs of their brain. And they were matched for age and educational level. So they went a long way to try and carefully control their groups. All of them were exposed to odorless air, to ordinary odors, and they had a variety. Lavender was one, cedar bark was another, butanol was another. There were several that they were exposed to. These are ordinary odors. They are not hormonal. And then they were exposed to androgens and estrogens. And during each of the exposures, they had PET scans, positron emission tomography, that will light up the area of the brain that is being stimulated. So what happened? With the heterosexual men, the heterosexual women, and the homosexual men, when they had ordinary odors, the lavender, the cedar, they, everybody reacts the same with ordinary odors, a specific, the amygdala was lighting up, was being activated. That's an area that's outside the hypothalamus. However, when each of these groups were exposed to androgen, something different happened. When men were exposed to androgen, nothing. There was no activation of the hypothalamus. When heterosexual women were exposed to androgen, there was activation. There was a response. And it was the very same response in homosexual men. Very same place in the brain, very same amount of activation. What happens when they were all exposed to estrogen? 
heterosexual men responded to estrogen. So their anterior hypothalamus was activated when they were sniffing, when they were smelling estrogen. That did not happen when heterosexual women were exposed to estrogen. It did not happen when homosexual men were exposed to estrogen. So here's something very fundamental, very objective, very well controlled study that again points to the fact that it is gestational in nature in order to have this setting of sexual orientation. And that's what is shown here uh, as in our earlier studies. Okay. So this too fits the model. So let's go back and look at all this together. Are all of these studies consistent with the model? Not 100% because not 100% are perfect studies. But again, the preponderance of the evidence, the very strong preponderance of the evidence, suggests that in gay males and in lesbians, that all of these studies are evidence that fits the model. And the model says that it's the hormonal, that the mechanism of sexual orientation, setting that sexual identity and orientation, is hormonal and that it comes early on in the gestational process.